And I'll, yeah, I'll win. I'll win. Just like I'm going to win right now. <laughs> Slam! Marcus's hand hits the table. Ow! <laughs> you hear the creak of calcium deficient bone. <laughs> Honestly, it was pretty good. I was about to give you a lot of credit for that, but you uh, you said you'd eat the world. I I mean, it was fi- figurative. Like The man slaps his forehead. It was a metaphor, of course. <laughs> so, uh, mistrial? <laughs> I, 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 look, I look around. <laughs> Fury puts up a hand. I don't think that's how it works. I don't know how it works. I'm using the closest approximation of... of uh, Terms that I can that I can manage here. I believe you've already lost, so you've lost for all yeah. eternity. <laughs> Fuck. Man, nobody could be having a worse day than me. <laughs> Fairy flicks open a, uh, a, sus- a more suspicious journal than the monster manual she's been keeping. But if my observations on the Anorian people are correct... You may be able to argue them about the definition of eternity. She flips mm-hmm. it back shut again. I've seen it happen at least once or twice. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, I lose for all eternity then, huh? I say, rubbing my aching hand. Yeah, kind of looking like it. Is eternity not itself just a wheel that turns endlessly? The man's jaw slackens slightly. <laughs> I, I look at Fury and widen my eyes slightly. She takes this a- is almost too easy. <laughs> she takes a few step- steps forward. Could I play? Fury, if I couldn't manage it, oh uh, yeah, you have way more muscle tone than me, actually. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she, she waits for you to stand up, taking your seat. Oh, oh man, I'm gonna feel that in the morning. So, uh, can I get some more of this tea? This is good stuff. Mm, yes, of course. It's brewed from the finest of fight leaves, uh, grown, oh, yeah? sourced huh. locally around this area. All of the violence is exceedingly homegrown. I guess something had to give it its punch. <laughs> <laughs> You hear a you hear a uh, distant laugh from outside. <laughs> you watch, uh, yeah, you watch as uh, Fairy begins to Jinkala wrestle this individual. Uh, she stares him dead in the face, as is the custom. Braces the cup of tea. Um, then her gaze sort of shifts for a moment. She stares at his arm, stares back up at him. He begins to espouse his philosophy. If the branches of a tree grow, is the tree growing? Is the or is the world around it shrinking? Uh, she appears intently focused on something, not exactly hearing his words. Then, she takes in one deep breath, and very quietly pressures his arm down to the table without breaking eye contact. (laughs) Marcus's jaw drops. Fury lightly flexes her arm, turns back and looks at Marcus. I never realized how much like an onion the human arm is. Was that a metaphor? She slowly shakes her head. As if you imagine it, it's just a bunch of tiny little layers all gripping and pointing in the same direction, right? I, so you just literally it. none of that makes sense. Like an onion, she clenches her fist shut. Okay. <laughs> the man suddenly throws up both his arms. I declare myself the victor. What? Uh, <laughs> she didn't debate my philosophy, proving that I was correct. <laughs> the man crosses his arms. Wow. <laughs> He's good. Fury says, taking a few steps backwards. <laughs> And with my best friend Aaron dead, and my master passed on to the next life of death. Yes, yes. I knew what I had to do. Flee the country, and try to bring back the Outriders. I was going to say fight something bigger, more fierce. I was going to fight something bigger and more fierce. Ooh, do tell. (laughs) It was the gaping hole left in society without the Outriders. (laughs) Later I'll get to the the part where uh, I stabbed a god in the head. Oh, who hasn't? (laughs) Uh, hmm. Hey, Marcus? Oh, yeah? You stabbed a god in the head? No. Is that... Why? There you go. Should I have? <laughs> I think you probably should have. I th- I think it's important for belonging to this this club. She, a fairy, looks around. I thought I had cred, but I've got nothing on these people. Thinking about it, I think only Weenie Richard hasn't stabbed a god in the head. Isn't that right, Weenie Richard? One of the uh, guards starts to raise a hand in the background. Yeah, that's right, that one over there. Weenie Richard got him from Caravia. Marcus puts a foot up on a chair. Uh, any deities in the house? <laughs> <laughs> And so with my background firmly established, we can move on to my current accomplishments. I was in jail in Meadshire for a while. Never heard of it. Sounds like a totally shit place. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit place, but only for the only for the best of adventurers. I got your back, Gregor. Yeah. Well, it's it's actually only for the worst of adventurers, but they bring in the best adventurers sometimes. Oh, and that's okay. me. 
Oh, he was probably the uh, pinnacle of adventurers there. I mean, you should have you should have seen him. He was slaying things left and right. It was ridiculous. I did slay a lot of things mm -hmm. for the greater good. Slew a giant yeah. skeleton. Mm -hmm. Oh, a big skeleton, eh? Yeah, oh, it was huge. You fought a big skeleton. Uh huh. We fight big skeletons skeleton. all the time. The Gravians love their big skeletons. Did you cleave your giant skeleton in two with a single blow? I think you underestimate Anorian combat mathematics. I cubed it. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, Gregor did it with a rusty fork. Rust? Where would I get a rusty fork? <laughs> oh, a rusty fork, did you? Why, why would you have a rusty fork on you? I wouldn't. I did it with a shiny glaive. Uh. <laughs> I think you're misremembering, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, that must be the case. You hear a uh, you hear a sudden roar from the other side of the bar. Uh, Fury has put down another one of the uh, bar goers. Therefore, you are an onion. Next, she right. stares at the rest wow. of the group. I'm gonna have to get some strength training from her. Quicker, let's uh, let's fast forward to that time that we fought a god of death. You hear a man having an existential crisis about his new state as a vegetable. Because <laughs> that's real impressive. You launch into that one. Well, we ran from this god of death a whole bunch because it would have killed us real bad. All right, but Until... only when it wasn't running from us. From Gregor, specifically. It couldn't really run. Uh, but we fought it. We, uh... Oh, why I couldn't it run? It. Last I checked, Gods of Death had about 20 or so feet. Oh, this one see... more had little, uh, grabbers. <laughs> like, tingly wingly ticklers. Imagine a sea serpent that can encircle an island six times over. Except a small shrimpy, island, Like, maybe. more of a shrimp. Not, like, <laughs> small, but, like... We talking encircle as in... Envelop or encircle as in can deploy a sort of native strategy that'll surround an island in a in an attacking manner. Envelop? What are you what do you what do you think we're talking about here? Oh, well the gods Oh, of it's constrict. Constrict. Now that's an entirely So you're talking about a big snake? The gods mm -hmm. of death I fought. The way they'd envelop an island is by leading their platoons of the damned. Oh, it had those too. <laughs> it did. It did have platoons of the damned. Uh, oh, did they have tiny undead drummers? No, no, actually, no, no. They had enormous undead trumpeters with little tiny hellish snare drums. No, no, no. Sixteen no. hands, one trumpet for each of them. I mean, maybe <laughs> between them cacophony. they had sixteen hands. Ah, now you're speaking my language. I believe we've encountered. I believe we've encountered the same march of the damned. Yep. And uh, big, you know, huge legions with big rusty swords, wicked blades. Gregor fought oh, all. Oh, wicked off. blades! How did you know they were evilly inclined? Uh, the sneers and the <laughs> color palettes. I've seen a blade frown, but I've never seen a blade change color on me. What color were these swords? Uh, they didn't. Re I mean, did you fight guys with swords? Yeah, they were the colors of um. Let's see. Uh, blood and tetanus. A wicked color. A wicked color. Mm -hmm. Tetanus? Mm -hmm. What's the color of tetanus? Kind of like a rusty brown. You hear another cheer from the far side of the bar. I'm thinking you're more a potato. <laughs> Gregor, what about that? What about that crazy final blow you landed on it? That was a spectacle to behold. Oh yeah, I got launched up into the air, and then I saw the meaning of everything, and it was a bunch <laughs> of glaives, and then I fell down and stabbed it right in the head. And it was like... Whoosh! Oh, oh, don't don't forget about the uh, the crater you left. Two hundred feet in diameter, not a scratch on him. Two hundred feet in diameter. Mm, did I say I diameter? Really two hundred foot ra radius. My bad. <laughs> a two hundred foot radius, eh? He scratches his chin. It cl it's clear that your bat battle mathematics are spot on as well. <laughs> now, based on what I've heard from you all, you've got a lot of tall tales, literally in some cases. But at the same time, I'm not hearing anything that would impress my legion into that would impress my legion into serving you, or whatever you are on about. Oh, how would you like some grade A training techniques? Uh, no, Gregor. Hold on. He folds his hands and leans in. Now you have me interested. Wait, what? <laughs> what do you favor in training techniques? Well, I told you about the Outriders, right? I pretty much do exactly that word for word. <laughs> Marcus gives up and walks away. <laughs> so, you know, start your day with some push-ups. Marcus sits down opposite of Fury. Oh, do you want to give it a shot? No, I just want to watch. She holds, she holds her hand out to you. Applying the success I've had up to this point, I could make you think that you're spaghetti. <laughs> I'm going to sit somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> to your back you hear a man I'm just I'm just a potato <laughs> just I belong in the dirt with the other potatoes 
So you begin you begin with some push-ups. Do you use some weights? You don't want to use weights first thing in the morning because, you know, you'll get all cramped up. The push-ups are really more of a stretch before you have your breakfast. Ooh. <laughs> My man chimes in next to you. <laughs> You begin to suspect his uh, sense of what to hype up is kind of odd. So for breakfast, you want a nice balanced meal. So no meat at all. Then you move on to uh... That doesn't sound like a traditional Jean Collin diet. Well, yeah, a traditional Jean Collin diet will probably kill you within a few years. By eating not meat and lots of <laughs> nuts, berries, fruits, greenery, vegetables, plants, fauna... No, wait, Flora. As Gregor's been talking, you notice that the normally raucous bar has grown dead silent. Everybody turns and fixates on him. It really uh, helps boost your immune system. You're immune to, like, stabbing more. You're more immune to punches. And it just makes you stronger in general, which you're gonna need, because after that, it's 500 push-ups with weights. If I'm hearing you correctly, you stick to an all-vegetable diet. Among other things. Among other things, please, go on. What, he slams his mug on the table again, is your opinion on booze? Booze is literally poison. It's literally poison that you put into you, and it makes you bad at stuff for a while. Yeah, it's fun poison. <laughs> <laughs> Rollin slowly slumps back in his chair, Letting it rock one time, his face vanishes into the shadow again. I mean, you you can do your own thing. I know lots of people who drink booze in excess. But um, <laughs> if you want to be as powerful as me, you're going to have to cut it out. And the damn fools all. He suddenly leans forward, big grin on his face. Uh -huh. Mr. Tornado Man, I believe we <laughs> have more in common than you originally thought. Uh, well, now, make me think it's, that. It's, Why? It's, it's one thing to be talking, it's one thing to be slinging lies about death gods and craters 200 feet in radius, but it's another to espouse the virtues of a good diet and not, and sticking away from the alcohol. He extends his hand. You're clearly a man who knows the ways of the world. Not the imaginary world of myths and legends, but the real world, the real hardcore heroic world of eating a balanced breakfast, getting to sleep at a good time, and all in all, keeping it reined in. <laughs> Marcus sips his tea. I uh, clearly misread this one. <laughs> Fog and the Bat Mask Pan bear down on Salvetta. The Bat Mask Pan bleeds heavily from a ugly diagonal wound across her frame. Thug's shirt flaps freely in the breeze. It's unbuttoned, not fully off. Uh, sounds distant reach my ears, footsteps, uh, swinging fists and clubs. <laughs> I force myself onto my stomach and grip the grass tight as I can, tearing it out as I pull myself forward towards Iggy, towards Thog, and towards the bat mask ban. Slowly and painfully, you crawl your way through the dirt, passing by a perfectly beautiful blue flower. Quickly stained red. You're certain now there's something up with Zalvetta. His increasing frenzy working against him. The two are actually able to hold him off, at least for the time. You manage to sneak by apparently unnoticed. I don't notice that I'm unnoticed. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've tunnel visioned. Everything is... It's taking all of my effort to keep from continuing to dry heave as I, uh, as I toss an arm onto Iggy's leg. I, uh, flip myself onto my back, uh, the one arm I have still with feeling, fumbling through, uh, my satchel. I grope around until I feel my fingers, uh, touch a mane. The moment that your fingertips impact that thing, you feel something erupt from the connection. Quickly, energy similar to your own rushes through your body, overwhelming your senses. You feel the incredible tingling feeling again, except this time, as the dots clear, Suddenly, you feel an ounce of clarity in that white-hot cyst of a mind of yours. You see the battlefield stretching before you, and the form of Iggy immediately to your right. Your visualization of how your magic worked, how it always worked, sits directly in front of you. It would be fucking off-putting if you weren't looking to heal this guy, but for now, that collection of nerves, bones, bits of flesh, 
you see sitting uh, pressed against the tree is incredibly useful. You're able to quickly locate the wounds. As I feel the well deepen, and as I see his body laid out before me, I focus on putting him back together. With a quick, deft motion, you're able to place your palm against the wound. Newly unlocked energy within your own body coursing outwards. You feel pleasant for a change. No longer the sickly, smothering feeling of your magic struggling against your mind. It feels as if something else is bearing the burden. As you pull your hand away, what remains is something unusual, unexpected. Clinging to your fingertips, to your palm, as if interwoven with your digits, lies a vine. Beautiful, vibrant, individual flowers spring from it, connecting you to Iggy. You shake it free from your hand, and it returns to the individual, embedding itself in his skin, blending with his flesh, becoming, for a moment, a tattoo, before the color fades and it simply vanishes. The wound is sealed without a trace. Uh... <laughs> I let out a breath, taking this one small victory to heart. I clench the fist I used to heal Icky and turn to Zalvetta, Thog, and the Batmasked Ban. Keeping my eyes on the group of three, I grip my own leg, which has lost a lot of blood. Uh, I conjure the image of the vine once more, knitting together the muscle and flesh. Power courses through your body. Familiar, off-puttingly different, yet, you know, feels okay. What was once a, an electric spark, a forest fire, uh, is now a pleasant root of a plant growing throughout your living body, reconnecting what was once disparate. The feeling is dissimilar. No longer cauterization, actual mending. It's a sensation you'd honestly been eager to feel for quite some time. Almost manically elated, I, I push myself back up, uh, standing on my own two feet. I grip the other wound I'd received, uh, repeating the process. Uh, I start stepping towards the, uh, the group. Zalvetta dives backwards. His, uh, his feet impact the ground, and he suddenly springs forward, diving on the, uh, on the bat-masked ban. One arm seems almost shriveled compared to the other that seems to be borderline engorged. Disgusting. Uh, however, it still carries a weapon. With one swinging, rotating motion, he sweeps the curved blade along the blue bat-masked ban, slicing open both of her forearms. Her weapon is now completely unusable. As you see him for the first time, with your newly enhanced vision, you see something within his belly struggling outwards. An additional sec uh, section of connections, nerves where there shouldn't be, replacing whatever what was human with something bestial. Suddenly that potato sack, whatever the fuck he was wearing, makes a whole lot more sense. He stares you dead in the eye. Uh, as I stand, I grab the blade, uh, I grab the nearest blade off of the ground. Uh, charging towards him. Thog moves in to combo with you, seemingly <laughs> shocked that you're on your feet again. Ash, you're back! Uh, I don't hear him. Yeah, his words <laughs> seem to emit slowly from his mouth. Alternatively, he could be talking slow as this motherfucker has a drawl. Eyes focused on Zalvetta, still as death on my target. I leap at the assassin. Uh, not a slash, not a swing, but a lunge. The blade pierces him, and I drive it through him, pinning him to the dirt. Seeing your strike coming, Zalvetta's distorted form quickly dodges out of the way, raking a single claw over you. Dodges to the side, more beast-like than man at this point. Uh, I whip around, uh, following the movements of the blonde-haired assassin. Blade still clutched tightly in my hand. I kick off the dirt, sending up bits of detritus, as I lunge toward him again, one hand outstretched, sword arm pulled back. I close the distance in the blink of an eye, ramming into Zalvetta with my outstretched hand, slamming him into the tree, as my other brings the uh, point of the blade barreling through his stomach. There's a satisfying chunk. I give another push as I anchor him to the blue-leafed tree. Once again, your eyes focus on the, uh, <laughs> uh, let's say the anomalies within his body. They each, a body system overlaid one over the other, begin to wriggle, rebelling against your attack. His form arcs backwards and lets out a singular pulse. Sudden panic rising as the bottom of my stomach drops out. I leap 
diagonally, not away from, but towards, <laughs> attempting to grab Iggy and pull him out of the way. As you dive, suplexing Iggy to safety, you feel the presence <laughs> of something horrific on your back. Pure malice, a mindless, berserking rage washes over you, and then quickly it diminishes. Your survival instincts kicked in, making you save Iggy, yet all that stands before you is Zalvetta, blade that formerly pinned him to the tree in his hand. He stands over you, once again returned to his normal shape. However, your newly increased perception t paints a very different picture. Overlaid, interweaving with his various inner parts, is the sh friendly shape of a puffy wisp. One of the nervous systems contained within his body apparently just collapsed into it. With an unsteady step, he leans backwards, hefting the sword. I said I'd give you a chance to run. You can still... He lifts the, uh, the blade up, takes one step forward, and collapses.